Nick Gallo, Bally Sports. Uh, Mark, it seemed like everybody that stepped on the floor played with confidence. How were you all able to, to kind of get to that after a couple tough losses here recently? Yeah, I thought um, the, the key to the game was the start. Um, defensively, good fundamentals. You know, we got ourselves back on track in terms of habits. You know, those last two games just um, weren't who we want to be. And then offensively, you know, I thought we played a great pace. I thought we really moved uh, hard in the half court on our screens and slip outs, which you have to do against them because they're a really physical team and they really switch. And so um, I thought the execution of those things is what got the ball rolling for us tonight. Obviously, um, you know, we got it going pretty good there in the second half, but what started the whole thing was fundamental. And it just, it seemed like contagious fun out there too. What's, I know you're probably kind of locked in on the, the X's and O's, but are you feeling just the kind of the joy that's brimming off the court? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I'm happy that I, we shared it with our fans, happy for the guys. Um, you're going to end up on both sides of that in an 82-game season at one time or another. I want the guys to enjoy it when we're on that side of it. But I also I, I want the guys, I told them after the game, I want them to realize what got it going, which was um, we had a great practice yesterday, came into the game with great focus on both ends of the floor of what we had to do, and that's what allowed us to have fun tonight. Um, and we can't lose sight of that. Last one for me. Uh, Shea, late scratch and it, nobody's looking around that you all seem to just play the exact same style and identity um what do you credit that to um you know the guys you know um they did a great job tonight you know we have confidence in them they have constant confidence in themselves shay has confidence in his teammates um and, you know that was on display again tonight it happened again um a couple weeks ago in the memphis game with him and josh out so um we're just going to try to play our game regardless of who's out there Pierre Salson, Bally Sports. Um, going back to the, d the defensive effort for you guys tonight, it just seemed like there was a lot of personal pride individually from guy to guy. Trey Mann just absolutely hassling, you know, Hauser up at the top getting this deal. What did you see in terms of the, the pride that, that each guy had out there? Yeah, we're not going to be perfect the 82 games, but the Charlotte and Philly games left a lot to be desired physically on the ball especially. Um, and we challenged the team yesterday in practice and in film on that you know, particular thing, and then it also wasn't who we wanted to be from a help defense standpoint. So uh, you're going to go in and out through the course of the season. You never maintain a you know a really high standard, which we have. Um, but the guys did a really good job of course correcting coming in the game, and obviously the end of the game was fun. But what started all that was a commitment to fundamentals and the game plan early. And just with the energy level, it seemed like a, a pretty 48 minute energy maintained throughout the night and after that Philly game when not in, in, no energy in the first and, and bringing in the second just what did you think of kind of the, the continuation of the energy throughout the night it was great uh, it was a 48 minute effort and but it started in the first quarter I thought we got off to a great start and we set a tone in the game uh, more so to ourselves than to Boston about how we were going to play tonight and um, I thought that first group that started off did a great job for us and then it continued throughout the game yeah, Cliff Brown, Associated Press. You know, you guys came out and got off to a great start, obviously, but, you know, halftime, you know, a veteran team like that that's been through it, they can come in and throw some punches at you and get back in the game. You guys weathered those all the way out through the third quarter. They gave it their, you know, they gave it the old college try, so, try, so to speak. You guys handled that. Your thoughts about handling their effort there in the third quarter when oftentimes those teams kind of cut into those kinds of leads. Yeah, I thought what Paris was talking about with kind of the individual pride uh, physically on the ball, especially, you know, late in the second quarter, they started to put their head down, Boston did, and they got to the line and they were trying to play through us and they were just trying to like jam their way back into the game. Uh, and we needed to stand in there in order to defend that off. And I thought the guys did a really good job of that, uh, especially on ball and especially, um, you know, at the point of attack. And it was, it was every guy tonight. Jerry Ramsey franchise, whenever you talk about game planning against these guys, I mean, was aggression and getting to the rim, was that like a main point? Because you look at a guy like Isaiah Joe, like trying to go to the rim and, and throw it down. I mean, that was, you know, I, I imagine that would get uh, the other guys going. Yeah, it was more like the force you have to play with against their physicality. You know, they are switchable at every position. They have great individual defenders. They have size everywhere. Um, and if you are slow against them, then, you know, it's going to be a long night. And so we just, I thought in Boston, we did a great job of it really for three quarters. You know, we, we were really forceful. We played with great pace in that game, and that's what opened up a lead there. And we wanted to do that again tonight, and the guys did a great job of executing it. Oh. Excuse me. Um, last week you said that, or yeah, last week you said that 
you guys had to have a little bit more attention and, and I'm paraphrasing or using synonyms, but um, when the Celtics come into town, um, was that what the what it was tonight when the start of the game that you've been talking about, that you guys just had more attention and to detail to the game? Yeah, I mean, these last couple games, we just haven't gotten off to a great start, um, you know, in terms of either end of the floor, uh, in terms of who we want to be from an identity standpoint. And when you do, it sets a tone for the game for your own team and for the opponent. And that was a huge, you know, point of emphasis coming into tonight. I thought, obviously, the guys did a good job. And Trey was very good on both ends of the floor. I mean, can you just talk about him specifically on the defensive end and him putting it together, especially like after last year? Last year, he got sent to the G League specifically for defense. So can you just talk about his effort on that end? Yeah, he was good tonight. You know, he, he had his chest on them. And uh, he was really good, actually, in the, I think, second, third, and fourth quarters of Philly. You know, he was one of the guys in that Philly game that really tried to get it going. Um, and offense is going to go in and out, you know, when you're a guy like him or Isaiah, whose you know strength that they're bringing to the team is jump shooting and shot making and um, rhythm, you know that's not all. That's not a constant for any player. And so there's got to be more to your game than that. And I thought Trey, you know, showed a holistic game tonight. So it seems like regardless of how the guys play, they always seem to try hard. Um, which is really hard to do in 82 games. Stuff gets repetitive. Sometimes you know guys get down. Can you kind of talk about the art of getting these guys motivated each and every game to where, you know, if somebody like Shea is out, you know, somebody like Giddy will step up and be that star guy? Um, yeah, I think it starts with who they are as people, um, you know, and as competitors. Like, it's not a hard group to convince to play hard and to compete. You know, they're just – they're preconditioned for that. They have that walking in the door. It's one of the things that Sam in the front office has done a great job of identifying in player acquisition – um, and now we depart from that at times, but when you go in front of the team and say, hey, we got to compete harder, or we got to be more together, or we got to play hard, um, you're speaking their language. You know, you're not having to sell it to them. It's, it's very much part of who they are as players, and that makes it a lot easier from a motivation standpoint. Mark, I, I know crazy things happen kind of every night in, in the NBA, but scoring a franchise record 150 without your leading score against the best team in the NBA by record. I mean, how do you just sort of explain something like that? Well, you're zero and zero every day. You know, it's a great zero and zero game. Um, and then I, you know, for us internally, I don't know how to explain the greater narrative of it, but for us internally, I just think it's, you know, being able to drill down the fundamentals that can help you do that. You know, that wasn't um, what we did tonight was not anything outside of what we could control other than the shot making, which obviously was a huge part, especially in the second half. We're banking shots in and getting free throw rebounds. But um, what got us off to the start and what got the game going in that direction was simple fundamentals that are important to us every day. And I think a game like that, we're not going to score 150 every night. But a game like that shows the power of those fundamentals, and hopefully that's the lesson we draw from it. Um, 150 tonight, obviously said franchise records, tied for the second most ever scored against the Celtics. Obviously, 150 is sort of an anomaly, but at what parts of the game are you seeing that are repeatable for success going forward in the other games this season? Yeah, just, I mean, the pace of play, you know, inside the actions, especially, you know, the, the two on two little games that you play against switching. You know, we're going to see a lot of switching. You know, sometimes it's schematic like Boston. Sometimes we try to create it with the defenders we're putting in an action. And our guys were just kind of dancing together, you know, in the action tonight to create advantages. And then we were spraying it out of those advantages. But I thought our, our force and the initial advantage on offense was um, the answer to your question. I just think the pace that we did that with tonight is something that, you know, we can learn from the game. Isaiah Joe has played just 30 games with Oklahoma City, but he's seen his three highest scoring games already of his career. What do you attribute that to, whether it's confidence or opportunity, whatever it is? Um, yeah, he's ready. You know, that's that's been on display uh, many times this year. I give him a lot of credit because um, he came here late uh, after training camp because that was when he got released. Uh, and so he missed camp and started kind of um, behind you know, with this particular group, and we were still learning him. He was still learning us, um, and he just—he's kind of walked in with his chest out. You know, I give him a lot of credit. Um, and every time we went to him early, he kind of—he dove headfirst into the game, uh, and he continues to bring that kind of juice when we put him out there. And it's not only the shot making. You know, like he really competes on the glass on defense. He knows what's going on. I give him a lot of credit.
a, it was a high energy game from from start to finish. Just what did you feel out there in terms of the energy you guys were able to create throughout the night? Um, we knew that we were going to have to play with a lot of energy. They're a really good team, and we had to come in focused and um, come to compete. I feel like the first group came out there, set the tone that we was competing tonight, and the second group just followed. I know defense has been a big priority for you guys recently. Just for you personally, what, what was your mentality coming into this game on that end of the floor? Well, for me, defense is like really the only thing I can control. Um, you can't really control shots going in or, you know, other people making shots, but you can control how hard you play. So my mindset is try to go out there, create some, you know, energy for myself from the defensive end because I know I can control it. And just with the amount of guys that got involved in this game, both offensively and defensively, just what was it like feeling just contributions from literally every single person to step on the floor? It was fun. Um, everybody was out there having fun, smiling, laughing, and playing with energy. Um, that's how you want to play every night. So uh, it was great seeing everybody have fun out there. Trey, a lot of talk about shooting is like form, footwork, and other things, but how much is it just confidence going out there? How much is your shot just affected by just feeling good and going up like every shot's going to go in? Um, that's very big. Um, and, you know, that's something my team, like my teammates, coaches, something they've been trying to, you know, give me every day since I got here um, my rookie year. And um, it's very big. I feel like if you don't go out there with no confidence, then, you know, you won't, you'll pass up shots and then, you see a couple not go in, then it affects your confidence more. So uh, having confidence is, like, very big. And then Isaiah had that giant dunk at the end of the game that really surprised a lot of the fans. Were you guys surprised? Nah, I wasn't. Because uh, what was the game he went? It was a couple games ago here. He went up with the left hand, and later in, I told him, I was like, bro, you could have dunked that. He was like, I didn't know if I was too far. I was like, bro, go dunk the ball. And we was literally talking about this yesterday. So he said he was going to do it, and when he did it, it was just like, man of his word. Without Shea in the game, obviously, you know, the big star and, and that stuff, you guys kind of look to each other, look like tonight you're very comfortable, six, seven deep. I mean, we're just talking to everybody that came in the game was very comfortable with their role and didn't put much thought into it. Just Can you get into how this team in particular is gelling and how it doesn't matter who's on the floor, the five of you guys are starting to gel? Yeah, I just think we got great players and then great people, um, guys who don't really care who gets the credit as long as we're just going out there and, you know, competing. Um, like I said, nobody really cares who's out there scoring, who's making the plays. Um, we just all want to go out there and compete and win at the end of the day. Trey, going back to your defense, the steal against Hauser that you had in the first quarter, you finish it with a fast break dunk. Did that kind of get you going a little bit? Yeah, it did. I, kind of take, a, take us through that mentality to kind of be aware that he's not a guy who likes to put it on the floor and trying to take advantage of that. Yeah, me, me and K. Rich, we like mess around with each other all the time, like saying guys who don't really want the ball. And, um, you know, I told Wiggs to uh, deny Brogdon to let Hauser get it. And then there I was just going to put pressure on him. And um, I saw him lose it the first time, so I just thought to myself, he don't want the ball. Then I just, you know, got to steal. And then going back to the dunks, J-Dub had a couple of big ones tonight. What, what do you think of him as a dunker? Um, I don't know what his 2K rating is for Duncan, but it should be 90 plus. But we were just joking about it. he had like four dunks in a row. It's crazy. Actually, I want to get back to Jay Will's shooting. He was a two or three from three point range. Uh, I know you didn't practice uh, or shoot around. You were talking about how <laughs> he was saying how uh, he wins these games or whatever. And you you kind of had a, a something to say about uh, the shooting and whatever. Yeah. Going tonight and knocking down a couple of threes, are you a little more impressed with the shooting ability? No, I know Jay Will can shoot. Um, he shoots like 40% plus in the G League. So um, it's not that he can't shoot. It's just the shooting game is, like, it's not really, you can't get lucky. If you have a good day with the shooting game, you still got to, like, it's five shots each spot, and then you got to go five in a row. So you can have a good spot, two good spots, but the five in a row is what get people in. You know, I know Jay Will can shoot, but I just feel like when it's time to hit five in a row, some people... A little shaky with it. Nick Gallo, Valley Sports. Josh, it just seemed like everybody that was on the court was brimming with confidence. How were you all able to kind of get to that feeling and mentality after a couple tough losses? Yeah, um, I mean, it felt like that. It felt contagious from the jump. I mean, we, we shot the lights out of the bowl, but 
I think um, our energy was high all night um, defensively. I think we got after we made it tough for Tatum and Brown, um, and that sparked our offense. And I think um, once you know one guy starts making shots, it, it spreads through the team and it's contagion. I think our offense is really good tonight. We flowed, we moved the ball really well. Um, we got a lot of good looks, and you know we made a lot of them. So, if we continue to play like that, I think we can compete with a lot of. You know, you're not obviously not going to shoot the ball like that every night, but I think the principles of getting those looks and defending the way we did, um, you know, is really going to help us going forward. Over the last couple of weeks, you all have talked about some of those defensive uh, principles. What was on display tonight? Because it didn't seem like they got much like easy. Yeah, um, I mean that's that's kind of the goal for us, making making things tough for the opponent. And you know, when you play a team like Boston, who've got so many weapons. Um, you know, you know you're not going to stop them. It's just about making it hard and slowing them down. And I think, um, you know, Lou, J-Dub, the primary defenders, did a great job. And I think our supporting cast around them really helped out. Um, so it, it was a good, you know, collective effort. Um, you can never leave guys like Tatum and Brown up to one player. So um, we did it as a team. And I think we spoke about that, you know, in the last couple of games. It hasn't been what we, you know, have been and would have liked. So cleaned it up tonight and, you know, got a big win. You had the baseline dunk, the bowled over uh, White basically on the drive for two. I mean, how are you feeling about just your f physicality at the rim right now? Yeah, it's feeling good. I mean, it's obviously something I've got to work on, um, finishing around the rim through contact. Um, so just trying to you know understand that um, a lot of the time I'm going to be bigger than my matchup. Um, I think in the past I haven't really used that to my advantage. So just understanding that um, a lot of the time I'm, you know, I'm trying to shoot floaters and stuff, but just trying to make an emphasis on getting to the rim, getting to the foul line more. Um, that's you know another area that I've really got to get better at. So um, just being aggressive, um, making the right plays, and when that's you know when that means getting downhill, you know finishing strong at the rim. Pierce Awesome Valley Sports. Coach gave you guys a lot of credit for how you started this game, particularly that first quarter. And you had a couple guys in the starting lineup who normally aren't in there. What allowed you guys to, to get off to such a strong start tonight? Yeah, uh, guys are ready to go. I mean, you know, obviously we plan to have Shea uh, all day until late. In, and then, you know, Wiggs gets told he's starting, comes in, does his job great. Um, so guys are ready to step up and um, take on, you know, bigger – um, you know, bigger opportunity and bigger roles, and I think uh, we moved the ball really well. It was, you know, an unselfish night for, for everybody. Um, so when we're playing like that, when we're defending the way we are, um, you know, we're a tough team to beat because you know we saw we had Kerish at the five, and that's a guy that can handle the ball and make plays. So we throw a lot of different lineups out there, but guys find a way to connect. And uh, when we play unselfishly and together, um, you know, we're a tough team to stop. Mark said that uh, you guys had to have a little bit more attention, especially on the defensive end, with the Celtics coming in. Um, is that was that you guys' mindset to start the game? Definitely. Um, I mean, as I said, they got a lot of weapons, a lot of guys that can get things done. So um, we definitely had to, obviously, you know, as I said, Tatum and Brown are the two main, you know, focal points. But um, they got a lot of contributors outside of that. Um, so we had to be switched on defensively from the start, and I think we were uh, for the most part. But um, you know, on the flip side, they're a really good defensive team, so we, we had to take care of the ball, get good looks, and I think for the most part, um, we had them running around. We got a lot of good looks, shot the ball really well, so um, we were good on both ends of the floor. I think we executed the game plan you know, pretty well tonight. And you specifically, you seem like you're playing much more comfortable basketball. Is it just that simple that you're feeling more comfortable, especially with the shot? Yeah, um, I mean, the shot's feeling good. I mean, you know, continuing to work on it. I, I sat here, you know, maybe a month ago, and um, I was shooting, you know, the percentages weren't good at all. And um, you guys asked me, you know, how's it feeling? I said, it's feeling good. And, and I said, these things, you know, take time, and you have to take steps backwards before you go forwards. And um, it's feeling good. You know, it's feeling better every day, continuing to work with Chip, with, you know, Mike Wilkes. And those guys are doing a great job with me, um, you know, keeping on me to get reps in, get my work in. So it's feeling good. And, you know, hopefully this can continue and continue to work on it. Kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, you know, shooters talk about being in the zone whenever they see it, but you had zero turnovers tonight as a pretty primary ball handler and uh, just getting that done. Did you have like a, a certain feel tonight that's a little different than other nights where uh, you felt like you could make every play and you know, actually you, you did without turning over? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, something I've been trying to work on, taking care of the ball. Um, you know, I've been pretty... Uh, turnover prone and you know sometimes you know some of the turnovers I throw um, I have a bit of leeway because um, you know coach obviously understands the way I play is a bit on the edge and um, he gives me that freedom which allows me to you know play the way I play so some of them are that but um, others are just careless stuff you know throwing passes that I shouldn't be um, you know loose ball handling so you know tonight felt good I'm um, just trying to orchestrate the offense early and then you know obviously in that third quarter you know found myself going a little bit but um, you know for the most part we're moving the ball everyone was playing unselfish and when we're playing like that guys are having fun. Yeah, Josh, just to follow up on that, you had 17 in the third quarter, three or four from three. Um, J-Dub had a couple of big dunks. Just how does it feel like that, especially against one of the best teams in, in the league that you're um, doing that also without Shea? 
Yeah, um, as I said, it's contagious. Um, you know, one guy makes a shot, the next guy feeling good about himself. And um, when the crowd's into it like they were tonight, it really gives our players energy. And um, we went on a run, they called a timeout. We went on another run, they called another timeout. So those things are contagious. And I think when guys are playing the way we did tonight, um, it spreads through the team, you know, through 12 guys, wherever we had playing. Um, and everyone comes in. And you know, every time you shoot the ball, you think it's going in. It's just the confidence that everyone had tonight. And um, when we're playing like that, it's a lot of fun. Um, Josh, obviously there's been a lot of talk about your shot, like you just mentioned earlier. You have a great night tonight. Um, just how much of that is it just nice to see that the work's paying off? Obviously, it's not something where it's just like one day you get shooting well and it just flips on forever. But to see the work paying off in a big game like this where a lot of people are going to watch and see just how much you have improved. Yeah, um, I mean, as I said, you know, you have to go backwards before you go forwards. You know, I was changing habits that I'd done for years and years throughout my basketball career. And, um, obviously struggled shooting the ball early on, but um, you know I was never worried. I was always you know understanding that these things take time and it's a process, and um, trusting the coaches and what they had in place for me. So um, I'm feeling confident with it. My teammates have confidence in me to shoot the ball, um, and you know just taking the right ones I think is is the you know big thing for me. I think last year I took a lot of tough ones uh, off the bounce, uh, off the catch. I felt like you know I had to prove to people that I could shoot the ball. Whereas now um, it's just about taking smart ones and, and making the right looks. How much of that is just, I guess, working with the coaching staff and just finding where your spots are on the floor, where you're more comfortable? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's getting reps and just knowing that, uh, you know, especially when Shea's out there, that defenses are so heavily loaded in on him that, um, you know, me and the rest of the guys have to be ready to knock down shots. I think um, that opens our offense um, so much more when guys are shooting the ball. As I said earlier, we're not going to shoot the ball like this every night. But uh, when guys are taking the right looks, you double down on that. And I think, you know, the same goes for me. Um, just taking the right ones and, um, you know, hopefully over time it continues, you know, to improve. Uh, Josh, last time out, your sister had 14 points and the D2 season picks back up on Thursday. <laughs> What's it been like for you to share this experience with her and how much have you gotten to watch SNU play? Yeah, um, it's been great, obviously. She lives with me. Um, it's been great. We we've been close our whole lives. So um, it's been great to have her in Oklahoma. It, it worked out perfectly that she was here and, and then I got drafted here. But um, I got to my first game last night. Um, they've all clashed so far, so I was able to get to one. But fun seeing her play. You know, we've grown up having so many battles in the driveway in the backyard. So um, it's awesome having her here. Who won those battles? She did early on, but uh, as we got older, I took care of him. Trace, Trace said he thinks j Dub should have a 90-plus dunk rating on 2K. <laughs> Do you agree with that? He is athletic. He has a lot of dunks. I think him and Shea, they always be debating about who has more dunks in the year. But, um, yeah, j Dub is a freak athlete. Nick Gallo, Valley Sports. Uh, Aaron, just the defensive tone that you all set in this one tonight, kind of at that, at that first timeout, it felt like, all right, this is going to be kind of blow for blow um, against the best team in the league. Yeah, uh, we were locked in, knowing that they wanted to play through Tatum and Brown, uh, two of the best, you know, scorers in this league right now. Um, we just kind of liked them as a team, uh, knowing we had to be in show, we had to be in our spots, and we had to kind of, you know, be ready to rotate um, regardless of what was going on out there. Um, they're a good team. They have good spot shooters around them. So we had to be on our P's and Q's, just kind of ready to uh, make plays on the defensive end. You guys seem like everybody got on the court, was playing with great confidence even after a couple tough games the, the last few nights why was that possible um just kind of continue to trust the process trust what we have um you know the way that we play um when we move the ball we're you know we're a really good team and guys get good looks and i think there's it's just a, the small things that kind of get guys going and uh you know seeing a little bit of uh shots fall early um i think it just kind of carried on throughout the game guys continue to you know be confident be aggressive and play within their game so i thought we did a good job you had seven different guys with at least three assists. Is there a level of unpredictability with who's going to be the playmaker, who's going to be the play finisher right now? For sure. I think a lot of us have, you know, the ability to kind of, you know, be a playmaker, to, to hit shots, to, you know, make those cuts. Like, there's a lot of different things that, in different ways that you can contribute to our offense. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, it, there's definitely a little bit of unpredictability there, um, you know, with guys being able to kind of make plays and, you know, especially when guys are playing confident and we're all, you know, on the same page. So, uh, yeah, I mean, guys kind of just, you know, we're out there playing free, comfortably. So that was good for us. 
Pierce Austin Valley Sports, you mentioned you guys being locked in just from the jump tonight. It just Coach gave you a lot of credit for the first quarter and how that kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. Just how important what were those opening minutes for, for you guys tonight? Yeah, super important. Um, physicality and just kind of toughness, being able to set the tone early. Um, I think that's huge in games regardless, you know, of who you're playing. Um, if teams come into your house and they kind of are more physical, tougher, you know, they're diving after loose balls, making plays, um, and, you know, just kind of outplaying you, it sets the tone for the game. Um, you kind of have a, a bump you got to get over throughout the game to kind of fight your way back. So I thought we did a really good job just kind of coming out, competing, showing that we weren't, you know, afraid of whatever, you know, they had for us today. Um, you know, they're a good team, so we had to be locked in, and we did a good job. Yeah, that tone you guys set, you didn't let your foot up off the gas, it seemed like, through any point in the game, especially coming out of halftime when you had a pretty substantial lead. Just what did it take to, to make sure that you, you maintain that, that same level of energy throughout the night? Uh, just knowing that they're not going to fold, they're not going to lay down. Um, we went in at halftime and, you know, we emphasized that, you know, regardless of what the score is, you can't play the score ever. So um, regardless of what the score is, you got to stay um, on your game. You got to continue to, you know, be the aggressor and, uh, you know, you can't let up. Uh, first off, did you have a good birthday? I did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> and uh, second, um, it's an interesting nugget this season that the Thunder are undefeated when you start. First, <laughs> did you know that? And second, are you going to yeah. play to start every game from now on? <laughs> I knew that. I don't pay any attention to it. People tag me and stuff all the time. It's funny. But, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have any comment on it. <laughs> it's just funny. And then um, – I don't know if you know this either, but when you do basically anything in the arena, you score, get a rebound, steal, whatever, the arena plays uh, Rich Drake songs. Song. Yeah. yeah. How, with Drake being your favorite artist, uh, how does that feel? <laughs> Yo, you're funny. <laughs> uh, who was it? One of my teammates told me that. Jay Will or Trey or somebody told me that they played that uh, when I score or do something. So that's funny. I don't know. When that song came out, that was all that the guys were singing. Every time they would try and like address me, they'd be like, 21, can you do something for me? And I'd be like, bro, it's like, it's enough. But it's cool. I like it. Um, just talking about you guys' scores, franchise record 150 points tonight, but you have a back-to-back -back planning in tomorrow. How do you guys compartmentalize the win tonight, enjoy that, but at the same time not let that hangover get you guys into the game tomorrow? We haven't done anything. I mean, we, we won a game, so, you know, we got to be ready to go tomorrow. We got to kind of lock back in. Um, you know, it's a good win. We played well, um, but we got to be prepared to kind of get back to, you know, the things that we have to emphasize going into the next game, you know, kind of prioritizing whatever it is that, you know, will g give us another win tomorrow night. So, you know, we got to get back to, you know, the mindset of, you know, being zero on zero and, you know, just go out and compete tomorrow. And then Shea's a late scratch. You end up getting the start. I'm sure you're anticipating playing anyways, but just going to that game knowing you're going to start and play against Tatum and Brown, are you cramming extra film watching those guys, or are you just prepping the same way you normally would? I had plenty of film before. I didn't even know I was going to start, so I had film that I was watching on Brown and Tatum specifically long before. Um, didn't know if I was going to play. Didn't matter. You know, I was, I'm always going to try and be prepared. So, yeah, I don't know. Nothing changed.